Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. I'm Skip Kinsella. I'm from Charm City Lug. Uh, we're based out of Baltimore. I'm actually from Rockville, Maryland, or at least that's where I currently live. Uh, this is my modern museum of miniature masterpieces. Um, the idea behind it is these are all real works of art uh, from the world. Uh, everything from as recent as 2021 all the way far back as 1420. Um, taking real works of art and reducing them to this very small size. And that's the challenge is taking, you know, what detail can I keep in a painting? What do I got to take out to make it recognizable to the public? Um, I'm trying to represent as many different artists as possible. Um, and also try to find paintings that people would recognize. Like there's a lot of art out there, but if nobody's ever seen it or familiar with it, then what's the point? You want to be able to connect with the public yeah, over this. As this. much as possible, except for the modern art. You know, everyone's going to know Mona Lisa and, and the Scream and all that stuff. So the modern art's a little trickier to find something. So I sometimes, a couple of these are actually covers of albums that I've got at home where the, the, you know, the guy, they use this artwork and put it on there. So I'm like, all right, that works, you know. Um, and then when I display it at shows, you'll notice there's minifigs all throughout. Some of them are generic characters. Some are famous characters. I've also got other people's sig figs in here. Um, the, the famous characters are mostly for the kids because they don't usually care about the artwork. They like, you know, hey, look, it's Stitch or whatever, and that keeps them in, involved. But I'm also kind of trying to make the point of everybody can enjoy art, whether you're a hero or a villain or just, you know, Joe Schmo or the janitor. Everyone should appreciate it. So if you can maybe take us through, uh, we can just start at the top row, sure. point out some of the, what the artworks are and some of the little okay. pieces you use throughout. Uh, so I started this three years ago. I build it in phases. So as, right now I'm up to 44 artworks. Um, so going through them, this is The Last Supper. Uh, next to that is, uh, oh God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to steal my guide here for a minute. As I don't always have the names memorized. I'm pretty good with it, though. That's actually the oldest artwork that's in the, the whole display. It's uh, the Arnolfini portrait. It's from 1434. Uh, next to that is Cy Twombly. Uh, has a whole series of what he calls blossoms. So uh, another side note, most of these are the actual paintings, but sometimes it's inspired by. So in the case of that one, He's got a lot of paintings that look very similar, and he did a whole series, so I just kind of picked one that's, you know, or, or went with that idea. Um, this is an example of one that was on a cover of a CD. The guy's name is Gerhard Richter. It's on the cover of a CD I have. He's done these whole, so, I, you know, I look him up, and he's got this, giant, this huge series of just striped paintings. That's just what he does. And so I was like, okay, well, that's cool. I've got that on an album cover. Let's do that. Next one is uh, Diego Rivera, The Flower Carrier. Um, next to that one is very famous Edward Hopper Nighthawks. Um, that's act the top row is here. My actually most recent edition. That was one that I'd been wanting to do for years, but really had a tough time figuring it out. Sometimes that's the problem here: is that I want to do a certain artwork, can't quite figure out how to do it, and I'll attempt it and attempt it and attempt it, and finally, like, oh, I got it. Uh, next is Degas. Uh, he did a whole series of ballerina paintings. So that was actually. Hey, there's a ballerina minifigure. Minifigure. Somebody's probably got to have a painting with those in them, and so I kind of work backwards on that one. And then this is the La Grande Jatte, which is also here at Brick Fair. I think you already interviewed or have talked to Matt. Um, he's a good friend of mine, and we did the comparison of mine versus his. It's a massive, massive it's mosaic massive. of it. And matter of fact, I mean, a friend of mine was fooled by it. He saw the picture online. He's like, "Are you in Chicago?" I'm like, "No, I'm in Atlanta." He's like, well, "What's that painting doing there?" But anyways. Uh, that's the smaller version. Um, I guess we'll just go row by row. This is, of course, the Norman Rockwell painting that everyone sees at Thanksgiving. It's technically called Freedom from Want. That is a Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, that is one in this display that I really struggled with. She has so many angles and curves, and trying to find the parts in Lego to do it was the hard part. Like I, I did about four or five different iterations of that before I got to where I wanted it to be. Um, this is Andrew Wyeth, Christina's World. That is, of course, the artwork that everyone calls This Is Not a Pipe, but technically is called uh, The Treachery of Images by Rene Magritte. This is the only artwork in the whole thing that's actually, quote unquote, not a famous artwork. So as you know, all artists generally sign their artwork or put their initials in it. This is my initials using the lenticular style. So if you look at it, the S, 
the, the, the C is in blue and the S is in orange. Those are my initials, Skip Kinsella. So this is my way of signing my artwork like artists do. So that's the only one that quote unquote is technically not famous, but will be famous after this video. <laughs> Next to that, of course, is the Sistine Chapel creation of Adam. God always falls off of there, so I always got to stick him back on. Uh, this is Auguste Renoir, the flower, the, the water. Uh, wait a minute. What's, what's the name of that one? I think it's the watering can. Girl with watering can. So as you can see here, since you're observing it, at the shows I have this guide with the picture and the actual build on there because I get tons of questions like, what artwork is this? What is that? I hate, you know, I like answering it, but it's just easier sometimes to have this sitting on a stand and then people can look. And then they can really hopefully appreciate how much work goes in to try to translate, you know, a complex picture like that into something uh, small with Lego. Um, Continuing on, so it's Veteran in a New Field. Uh, that's an American artist. Uh, this is a Japanese bridge over water, which that's the Monet. And then this is the uh, barmaid of the Boye Foyer Berger, which is Monet. So I did that purposely, Monet next to Monet, just to be obnoxious. Next row down, this row is mostly like all modern artists. So we've got a Mark Rothko. Easy to do in Lego. He's got all very, you know, if you're familiar with Mark Rothko, it's all just squares and, and rectangles. So that was e that was an easy one. And then this, of course, very famous P.A. Mondrian. So that's another example of, it's not an exact painting of his, but everybody knows the style. So, you know, easy enough. This is a, a modern artist by the name of Damien Hurst. He creates these giant paintings of just dots in, in organized rows and columns, and every single dot is different color. Yeah, it's incredible. And he's got some that literally have thousands of these dots that just are technically all different colors. So what I did there is that's literally every color of dot Lego makes and just put it in there. Well, I mean, it's the same idea. So that's kind of how I did that one. Um, uh, Vasily Kandinsky, uh, concentric circles of squares. A lot of people have that in their living rooms. That's kind of a famous painting you find in art, art stores. Next is kind of another inspired by, that's Keith Haring. Um, he has that very kind of bold line style and a lot of his paintings do have a heart. And so that, so not an exact painting of his, but representative. Next, depending on your age, is either a Pokeball <laughs> or it's the Campbell's Soup Can by Andy Warhol. I mean, yes, it's technically Andy Warhol, but you know, I get lots of kids going, hey, it's a Pokemon. Oh, no, so get that. Um, Banksy the street artist from London who nobody knows his real identity. Next to that is a Jackson Pollock. This is an example of, I love being in a lug because when I first showed the first phase of these years ago to my lug members, somebody said, are you gonna do a Jackson Pollock? And I'm like, I'd love to, but I can't figure out how to do it. And somebody goes, well, use the bars and levers. Yeah, perfect, you know, so this, that's just the great thing about being in a, in a Lego user group and having friends that do this stuff, you can ask questions and get ideas to, to help your project. Uh, this is another example of one that's on a CD cover that I have. His name's Frank Stella, so a modern artist. Uh, this is an American artist, Jasper Johns. He did a whole series of uh, targets. This is what he calls them, target paintings. So that worked out really well. Uh, this is Paul Clay, uh, K-L-E-E. -E. He's a Dutch artist. Studied him in college in one of my college courses, so I had to have something by, by him in there. And as you can see, this is another case of the minifigs are placed kind of strategically. I've got black and white stormtroopers in front of a black and white painting. And you gotta zoom in on this. Look at it from this angle. Look at the storm, no, other, come, come around this way. The stormtrooper taking the picture is holding the camera backwards because we all know that stormtroopers have perfect accuracy. <laughs> Uh, next to that is uh, very famous, the Gustav, uh, Gustav Klimt, The Kiss. And then we got the bottom row. So these are, the bottom row is kind of the most famous paintings, and I put them down there at kid level, because these are ones that a lot of kids will recognize. So of course you can see we've got um, Starry Night and The Scream. I had mine before Lego made their big set. <laughs> Um, again, strategic placement of putting Beaker from the Muppets in front of the screen. Again, Gen Xers will get it. Kids will be like, what? Um, uh, the Great Wave at Kanagawa. Again, Aquaman's favorite painting because he loves water. Uh, Sunflowers by Van Gogh. Uh, next over, uh, uh, Picasso. Uh, the Dream. Uh, then Son of Man by Magritte. 
We, of course, have the representative from the British Museum who is here to steal all of the artwork for the British Museum. Uh, of course, most famous Mona Lisa. Uh, I've got Snape standing in front of it because I just feel like Snape would have a crush on somebody dark and brooding. Uh, next to that is the Van Gogh self-portrait. Uh, next one's down. This is uh, Whistler's mother. And uh, that's Girl with a Pearl Earring. I've got Stitch and Edna Mode together because I just feel like they'd be trouble all around. Uh, this is um, Icarus by... Okay, I can't remember that artist. Uh, la, 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 la. I got stumped. That is Henri Matisse, and that's Icarus. This is another case... This is a case of a painting where I saw the piece first. I saw the clamshell piece. I'm like, wait a minute. I can make an, I can make an artwork out of that. That's the, you know, that's the, v, the Venus coming out... Um, so that's the Sandro Bocelli, The Birth of Venus. So some of these, yeah, I found the pieces first and then went, oh, hey, artwork. Um, and then the last module here, this is the Card Players by Paul Cezanne. He did a whole series of these just card players in Spain that he did. And then lastly, uh, American Gothic. Everybody knows American Gothic. And I got Harry and Hermione there. That's not relevant to the, relevant to the painting at all. So some of them are strategically placed, others aren't. You know, I, I, find, I feel it's a little sacrilegious to put the, you know, Santa and Mrs. Claus in front of the Last Supper. There's always that Jesus versus Santa battle at Christmas. But um, it's really interesting at taking this to shows. Some people just kind of look at it, and then there's always that look on their face when they realize this is not just pretty little bricks together. Like, wait a minute, I recognize that artwork. And that's, I love that, that, that people will then stop and really start to look and go, wow, hey, wait a minute, I recognize this, I recognize that, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not adding to it this year, and this is actually the only show I'm taking it to this year. I've taken this, to, you guys have seen it at several shows. Um, so I'm just bringing it to Atlanta this year, I'm working on other stuff, but next year I think I'll have one more row uh, up on the top to give me an even 50. Sounds good. I think this is a spectacular collection so far, and I love all the little details in the paintings as well as the minifigures you've added. It just kind of brings it to life as well. So what are some of the, the reactions? You've referenced a couple of them, but okay. as the public you know, comes by this, what are, are there specific paintings they normally pick out? How you know, does that work? It's always Starry Night and the Scream down here. It's always Mona Lisa. It's, you know, again, so all the popular ones down at the bottom, people really recognize these. But I will say that at Brickworld Chicago last year, I mean, I can also always tell the art teachers and the art professors, um, and I'm really impressed. There are kids that have named like over half of these without even looking. And that just, that makes me smile that, you know, because I come from an artistic music background. Um, so it absolutely makes me smile that there are kids out there that have this kind of knowledge that appreciate their arts in that sense. But uh, back to the Brick World Chicago, last year I had one person, the record is 42 out of 44. This guy, I, he was an art professor, knew them all, knew 42 of the 44 without even looking. But yeah, some people just, this is my favorite thing at the show. I'm like, everybody's got something favorite at a show. So I always kind of take those with a grain of salt. But I do... I do love it when people kind of look at it and they don't get it at first and then all of a sudden it clicks like, wait a minute, that's this. And, oh, now I, or Last Supper has also been very popular lately. People have been recognizing uh, that one up there. Yeah. Well, great work. Thank you for taking the time thank to give you. us the behind the scenes here and can't wait to see it all finished with, with more of the build. So thank sure. you. All right. Thanks, guys.